Okay guys, so today I'm gonna go back to throwing cylinders. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to throw cylinders with porcelain. Um, I have a couple of members in my studio here in New Jersey that have said, hey Mel, can we try porcelain? And I'm fine with throwing porcelain. I just feel as though you shouldn't waste the money on the slightly expensive clay until you have the skill of throwing relatively well. So you can see what I did. Um, people often ask me what tools I use. I'm literally a four to five tool person. I use my nifty pin tool. Um, I do enjoy the pointy wood tool. Something to look out for all the time. What makes it a good wood tool is that it has a pointy edge, especially with porcelain. Um, that's going to give you a nice good trim down on the bottom, which a lot of you guys know is really important to me. I use a round sponge just like this or you can use um, a kitchen sponge. I don't use the soft elephant ear, small hole sponges. I don't think they hold as much water. And that's pretty much all you'll get out of me when it comes to a cylinder. People ask me often about the square bat. I like the square bat for a couple of reasons. Um, when you're throwing with them, you can put them right next to each other as compared to the round bats, which will sometimes overlap if you have a limited amount of space. That overlapping really concerns me when you're dealing with something tall or a bowl, that slight bit of gravity will actually warp your pot and you won't know it until the very end when it comes out of the kiln and you'll wonder why is my leaning tower of Pisa happening. Um, you'll notice that I checked a bunch of them. Sometimes these do tend to warp for several reasons, which I can go over another day. If it does this, I would not use it. It's gonna give me a bit of a hard time. Whereas when I use this, it's kind of rattling a little, but it's not horrible. So how much clay do I start with? I start all of my members off with a basic one and a quarter pound ball. Let's say you're centering and you're having a hard time. If you lose a quarter of a pound, you're still gonna end up with at least a pound cylinder. Um, I start with a pound and a quarter because I think that's just about right for, let's say, a, a large mug once you get good. I always start with this sort of teardrop shape or grimace, as I've noticed mentioned in the past, gumdrop. What that's gonna do, it's gonna get me a real nice seal when I put it down on the center, whereas if it's a ball and I do this, you could get some air trapped underneath there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it right in the middle there. I do not seal it down first because if it's not in the center, when I seal it down, it's gonna be even harder to get it down in the center. So what I'm gonna talk about today is how big can a pound and a quarter be? How tall is really the question people ask. The problem with that question is, if you're dealing with a cylinder in the end that's three inches wide, you're gonna get something that's a lot taller. If you're gonna go three and a half, you're gonna lose a substantial amount of clay. And if you go four inches, you're gonna deal with a lot shorter. So I'm gonna throw three balls of clay into a cylinder at three different widths. So I've got my nifty ruler here. Me being here in New Jersey, um, it's an inch ruler. So if you're watching me from outside the country, I don't deal in centimeters um, very often. So anyway, all right, so I start with my hands. My bucket is filled with water all the way up to about here. I don't want to dip my fingertips in like you're in Madge from Palm Olive for all of those people in there, you know, Gen Xers who know about Madge, but you want to dip your entire hands in there. What I am noticing with porcelain is that I have to add a lot of water in the beginning. If I don't, that little bit may get stuck on my hands and then I end up with a whole bunch of these. And we want to try not to lose too much clay. I'm also noticing with porcelain that I'm not starting off too fast. I'm going at around 75 miles an hour and I'm cupping the top of my hand. But as you guys know from my past videos, I always, always lock my elbow into my hip crease there and I use my body weight to push forward. And I want to lose as little clay as possible because of the little fine um, grains, you, you can easily get stuck and grab a bunch off. Now I'll start my speed up. Again, I push at six o'clock between six and seven with the heel of my hand. You can see right about there, that's where I'm pushing. No fingers. My top hand is going down and I'm just hanging out, pop an air bubble as I go. What I do notice with porcelain, um, you guys might've watched from my past videos, I tend not to wedge out of the bag. With porcelain, I'm finding you have to wedge. The minute the air touches the outside of this clay, it does start to dry that outside skin. And what I notice is that by wedging it, it will, uh, it will mix up that outside skin with it. So I'm also gonna cone up because of that same reason. So I'm gonna do it relatively gently, squeeze in 
at the heel of my hand towards my fingers up at 12 o'clock. Go into a tiny cone. Remember, I always make my cone look like a cone, not a tall stick. That tall stick is possibly gonna lean over. And then I'm gonna cone down. This is when I tend to lose a little bit of clay and I tend not to care, but I tend to lose a lot more with porcelain. So again, I just wanna add water. I'm gonna loosen up the amount of water or lessen up the amount of water as I start to throw the porcelain. I'm gonna go down to the height that I'm aiming for and then these fingers get invited to push this butt in. Remember, pinky's not invited because I don't want this, this route under here. So by pushing my middle finger and my ring finger into the side, I'm filling in that sort of pinky mark that might have happened. And my right hand is dropped down because I'm aiming for this curve. And I'm pushing in with my left heel, with my um, left hip. And if I slowly take my hands off, I'm centered. Remember, I also like to start with a nice um, right angle over here. That's gonna stop me from leaving clay on the bottom. So. Right now, I'm gonna start with a, sil a mound of clay that is very bad at size and distance, about three and a half, three and three quarter inches wide. Let's see how wide that's gonna make me a cylinder. So I'm gonna go down, wheel going fast, my right thumb down touching the clay, my left thumb is right on top of it, elbows down on my body. Now this is also where it gets a little complicated. Your fingers can dry out really easily with porcelain. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water midway. I am not aiming for a foot. So I'm gonna go in and just for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and stick my pin tool down. And I've got about, you know, I really should measure this because I never do. Uh, about a quarter of an inch I've got down on the bottom there. Wheel going fast again. Now I wanna open up into a cylinder. So my two fingers are gonna go towards my left palm. My left palm is gonna pull out just a little bit. And I wanna open up so that the inside of my pot is right around the edge of the outside of my mound. Take your time and repeat that in your head a couple of times. The inside of my cylinder is right on the edge of the outside of my mound. So what that's gonna do is it is gonna cause a little bit of a butt, but that's gonna allow me to get a nice angle. And then I come out and in the way I went in. So you can see that the inside is right about the outside of my mound. So this is hanging out. So right now I have my wall here which is the de desired thickness that I want for my pot. And then for all you people who get distracted with the inside, go ahead in there with that sponge, hold on tight, just compress one side. So now I'm gonna do what I've called the corrective pull. It's thin here, thick here, and theoretically thin here. So with my first pull, I'm gonna correct this part here. Full sponge of water, I'm gonna touch with the side of my finger and the sponge is gonna follow up. My inside hand is sort of curled. Remember, I don't use this finger because it's curly and broken. I start down on the bottom, not very much pressure. And I'm gonna put a lot of pressure in the center there. I'm gonna start to go up. You may hear that ticking. That's because my bat is a little loose. It causes a little bit of a challenge. You'll actually notice that when I start to pull, I'll leave my pinky down here to push that down so that it doesn't go flying up. So now I've got that first pull and now I don't really have to worry about thick and thin anymore. I'm gonna start down on the bottom again. Now with porcelain, you may feel it stick just a little bit. At that point, you just wanna be super mindful. If you wanna stop and add some water, feel free. It is sort of sticky. That's really what I feel about porcelain. It's, it's a, the grog I think doesn't allow it to loosen from your fingers. I don't know, I'm sure someone's gonna correct me. I'm gonna start down here again. Remember, I'm dealing with one ring of clay at a time. I'm not touching the entire pot with my whole hand because what that's gonna do is, I say it all the time, play a record with a brush. So you don't wanna play every line of the song at the same time. If you do this, you're gonna be putting even pressure where it's thin and even pressure where it's thick and you're gonna confuse the clay in my opinion. So I always try and work with one line of the song at a time, like a record needle. This is gonna allow me to pay attention to the thick and thinness, the variation of the pot. We go down here again, get a little bit more of a grip down on the bottom. Again, see my hands can't touch, but the minute I have the ability to get that hand out of there, I drop that left thumb over 
the lip of my pot and I go up to the top like that. So um, Simon Leach has this phenomenal short sponge tool on a stick. It's a stick, it's got a little sponge and every time he's here, I always forget to buy one. And right about now is when I go, boy, I wish I had that Simon Leach um, sponge tool. So Simon, I don't know if you watch my videos, but send me a Simon Leach sponge on a stick. Maybe I'll get a little influencer discount there. So now I've got this cylinder. I'm just gonna go in and correct it a little. So I'm gonna put a little more pressure on the outside where it was thick, where it was bulging out. Right here, it's a little thicker on the inside. And now I'm gonna pay attention to my lip and thin that out just a little bit. With porcelain, you can go a little thinner um, if you have the patience. Try and do that a little. So what I've been noticing about porcelain is to me, the difficult part has been the post-production. Um, if this is a little thinner than this, this is gonna dry so much faster. Um, that hurts a lot or becomes more difficult when you are dealing with um, handles, um, accoutrements on the side, things that you want to add on. Um, that's really been sort of my struggle lately. All right, so now I'm going to call this a pot. I'm going to use my very pointy wood tool. I'm going to start down here, up on top here, and I'm going to cut straight down. For beginners, I show them that the pin tool can go right underneath that loop tool. I mean, sorry, underneath that loop of clay. Cut that off and move it to the side. Now let's see where we're at here. We are at 3 and a half by 5 and a quarter. 3 Let's write that right on here. Three and a half by five and a quarter. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead with the same exact pound of weight, and I mean exact. One pound, four ounces, not, not an ounce more, not an ounce less, because those small ounces are gonna really make a difference when you're trying to make a set. And also, if you make 10 mugs, 10 pots, Number two is gonna be a lot bigger than number one, and number seven, eight, nine may suck. But two through six are gonna be really awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and center the same way, heel of my hand, drop my wrist. Now, with that ticking, what I do is I don't push down, I sort of float above the bat so that I'm not pushing down into the wheel, but I'm sort of floating right above it. I sort of notice all the little nuances, clean up that bottom. Now I'm gonna start with it a little wider. I don't normally measure, but before I was at about three and a half, I'm gonna go down to about four. Okay, slowly take my hand off. So I say slowly take my hand off because if I take my hand off too fast, it literally would throw it off center. So you see a lot of people start and they're doing this. So you just wanna get it right where it is and slowly take your hand off. I'm gonna go down again. may have to add a little water. Now this is super important too. If you leave more on the bottom than you did before, or a little less, that's gonna affect how tall your pot's gonna get. So super important to be consistent. So I tell everybody, make yourself 10 balls and try and try throw 10 of the same thing. Pull straight towards my left palm again. I'm gonna open a little wider because I'm aiming for a slightly wider mound of clay uh, cylinder. I'm gonna go in there, corrective pull, slow down my wheel just a little bit, ignore the ticking. So do I recommend square bats for beginners? No, this is an extra element of, when we do cylinder boot camp here in my studio, I introduce them and it either changes lives or makes lives worse, who knows. Compress that lip. Remember, I'm aiming for a cylinder that is wider than the three and a half from before. So 
So if I have this, this is this three and a quarter, and that's much wider. Let's see where we're at now. Straighten you up a little bit. Now that I'm 49 years old, I have to close one eye to see the profile without my glasses on my head, but then the glasses fall down as I'm trying to measure, so it's just easier to close an eye. All right, so now we're at four inches wide by five inches high. So the first one was five and a quarter by three and a half. And now this is four inches. Let's make this dirty so we can write on it. Four by five. That's why it's really difficult. People ask how much clay do I need for a mug? Well, um, if you're putting a foot on it, you're gonna lose about, you know, uh, a third of a pound if you're gonna keep a really wide foot on the bottom like I make these super wide um, sort of mugs and I lose quite a bit by the width of my the bottom There's sort of a, you can look at my tornado mugs so it's really hard to determine how much clay you need so it's really a super difficult question to answer all right so here we are Right here, my mounds of clay is about, let's make it four and a half. Let's see what we can do here. So remember, when you're making your clay wide, to make anything wide, whether it be a plate, a platter, you wanna center tall and high first. If you try and center with it wide, if I was to try and cone this up, I would definitely get that volcano. So you wanna make sure that your clay has been centered in sort of that mound shape first and then slowly ease it down into flat. I'm gonna open up wider. Oh, I forgot to check my base, but you guys trust that it's a quarter of an inch, right? I also forgot to fix the bottom for those people who are bothered by the bottom. Okay. I do a little bit of a correction there with the heel of my hand. Um, maybe that's another video. And I'm gonna start to pull. So some of you guys in my comments have been asking um, where I am located. I am located in Madison, New Jersey. Um, I am currently opening my third studio in Montclair, but I also have one in Boone. It's called Mud Clay Studio, so feel free to follow us on the Instagram. If you wanna see the work of my students, um, it's on the Instagram, call it underscore it, the call underscore it underscore a underscore pot. You guys may have heard me say it often, you sometimes just gotta call it a pot. Um, and uh, yeah, I do sell my own work. Um, but I tell everyone I'm so busy making YouTube videos and running businesses that I'm really busy just making mugs with Dave Matthews Fire Dancers on them. Uh, and when I am a little less busy, I'll finally make work that uh, means something more to me. <laughs> so stay tuned. My actual um, Instagram is Mud Girl Pottery, as you can assume. Okay, so that's me doing my little plug. And now we're gonna aim for, again, four and a half inches wide. And we're gonna see how high we get. So can you make it wider um, once you've made it a certain width? Um, and the answer is not really. Your, your floor has pretty much been determined by your open. Um, can you make it narrower? Yes. Um, but it's super hard to make it wider. If you want it to be a cylinder, if you don't mind it being sort of V-shaped, then yes, I can turn around and pull this lip out farther. Um, but you can't make a 
six inch cylinder, six inch wide cylinder out of three inch wide base. Um, all right, so I actually did not measure correctly, which I know some of you enjoy when I do fail. So I'm gonna make this a little bit less of a cylinder just to show you how I'm losing height when I make it wider. What did we say we were gonna do? Four and a half, right? All right, there we are, four and a half. Um, when you guys see these in the final, you'll see that my bottom is a little narrower because I did exactly what I told you you can't do. I already forgot to cut off the bottom of my last pot. Okay, here we go. So this is four and a half wide by four and a half high. So you can see when I show you all three of them how the width really determines how high your pot's gonna be. Now, can, does it probably hold the same, same amount of liquid? Probably, but again, the variations are how thick your foot is um, and how wide you are to begin with to get the height. All right, guys, so here you go. Um, same amount of clay, one pound, four ounces. I lost very little in my centering and my trimming. Um, sorry, my centering and my pulling. So on your right, that is uh, five and a quarter inch high by three and a half inch wide. The middle one is four inches wide by five inches high. And then the one over here that I did a little bit of a goof on is um, four and a half inches wide by four and a half inches high. So you can see the variation on just that little bit of a difference in the width of your height. And now you can choose whichever one you prefer aesthetically, but you kind of get an idea of why, how tall should one pound and a quarter be? How the answer is really relative. All right, guys, so good luck. Try out some porcelain. Follow us on the Instagram at mudclaystudio.com, mudgirlpottery, and call it a pot. And don't forget to subscribe, and feel free to write in the comments what videos you'd like me to see. Talk to you soon. Bye.